Always waiting on Jules. This is true. God, why can't I circle <laughs> Jules here. Dylan. And welcome to another episode of our ultimate spirits competition. Ding. Ding. Um, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Let me say ding. Uh, so yeah, this is our spirits competition. This is the competition, the only spirits competition that lets everything in that's a sipping spirit and subjects it to the same rigorous scale by the same judges who are basically, we're, we're the best judges ever because it's us. And this is the best spirits competition ever because we devised just the most insane 100-point scoring system. But enough about that. Let's... And that was the most long-winded introduction <laughs> we had on this show. Uh, let's just get to what we're drinking here. Uh, Calumet 14. All right. 14-year-old bourbon. Uh, Calumet, which uh, doesn't really exist. This is sourced. We believe the source is probably Barton. Um, but it's a pretty good looking bottle, I think. You know, 14 year old bourbon, you don't see that every day. Um, Can I just say, I, from really far away, I thought it was Pappy. You know mm. what? You know what? That, that's, mm. a, that's a reasonable mistake. A reasonable mistake. Um, it's a pretty cool looking bottle. Yeah. I mean, I do like the design. The other Calumets, you know, they kind of have that short squat right. bottle, right. which I didn't like that much. Stout. It kind of looks like the Woodford Double Oak, you know. It's more like Whistle Pig. No. It's shorter than that. I should have. Oh, yeah, I should have brought the my like. <laughs> I don't know how many year old one, but um, yeah, it's very different. Yeah, it's very you had different. A Twelve or the ten, right? Yeah, but the thing is, I, I I was at a store when I saw this on the shelf. So I was walking by, in the corner of my eye, I saw it. I said, "There's no way Pappy's on a shelf, right?" And you know, I went over so as I got worked. closer, brought my glasses. I put <laughs> Um, you know, and I said, um, okay. so one of the nice things about this is, yeah, it does say it is age stated 14 years and it also tells you the mash bill. It's always exciting to see the mash bill printed on the front of the label. You can see that down there at the bottom, 74 corn, 18 rye, eight malted barley. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. It tells you the date it's barreled. It's non-chill filtered. I mean, a lot of nice sounding stuff here. 14 year old non-chill filtered. Yeah. Uh, 96.2 proof. So 48.1% alcohol, probably not quite high enough for Dylan, but it's water. It's a, it's, that's a, that's a good proof for a bourbon. You know, you're above 90 at least. Um, you got more info? Yeah. So, uh, we know the source. Well, because they give the mash bill, I mean, Barton's, uh, mash bill is surprise, surprise, exactly the same. <laughs> um, so this is a source Kentucky bourbon owned by Western Spirits <laughs> Beverage Company. I love it. Um, they also own the Sam Houston bourbon brand. And we would be remiss if we didn't speak a little bit about that, but go ahead. We'll yeah, so the, the, um, this name is an homage to uh, William Wright, uh, an owner of the Calumet uh, Baking Powder Company. And the farm uh, was very famous for its prized horses. And uh, they say that this comes in small batches of just 19 mm. barrels. Uh, and of course, uh, picked from a very ideal... Uh, Rick House location. Yeah, so, so there's 19 barrels. Right it's kind of like the way I look at this is is like they're internal barrel picks. You know, they'll pick the best ones and then they'll, you know, either blend it or, or. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting too because I've toured Barton Distillery before and I was told by the people there that they don't age anything beyond 12 years. So I don't know if they buy these barrels and then they transfer them to another else. warehouse. Yeah. Or if the guy at the Barton Distillery just lied to me. Or maybe only the stuff that they release under their own brands. Yeah, but only... when did you go to that tour? That was about a year and a half, two years ago. So maybe... Oh, <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty recent. Okay. 
Um, I thought this was like 10 years ago. And it was no, no, but you did mention um, the Sam Houston 14, which in the uh, the whiskey tube world is kind of blowing up as a, as a whiskey tuber favorite, bourbon nerd favorite. Um, the Calumet 14, similar in a lot of ways. Um, I've seen some people do head-to-heads. Some like uh, Sam, I think most people prefer Sam Houston, let's put it that way. Mm. Um, but, well, thanks for uh, tainting. The... Well, you haven't had Sam Houston. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, let's get tasting. Huh? It's like Dylan automatically docks twenty points. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I don't really care about other people, so not even us. That's true. Especially not us. <laughs> <laughs> it's like straight talk with Dylan. <laughs> I don't like people. <laughs> Forgot to mention, price point on this is um, 120 ish. Uh, you can see it in that range. I'd say you'd probably find it between 100 and 150. So it's up there. Oh, man, I don't know if you're struggling like me because of the low struggling. proof. It's it's like it's. I, I don't know if it's trying to break through, but I'm trying to identify the. I'm trying to give it. Could use some water. Uh, no, I think it, we, we need to concentrate it more. I, I, I think I know what you're saying. Anyway. Um, and I think I know why it is the way it is. Okay. All right. All right. I, think I know why you're having that issue. All right, guys. We've had some time to taste. We've been able to score. Let's start with the good. Jules, why don't you start us off? Here's I what's... <laughs> I know you like talking about good things. Yeah, exactly. Especially here when it comes to good marketing, and that's what <laughs> this, this is where it knocks it completely off everyone else's rocker because, I mean, look at this presentation. The bottle's great. The labeling's great. It's got the mash bill on it. How often do you see that? That is cool. And age stated. Um, I mean, come on. You know, it hits it on all marks, dude. And as uh, was mentioned many times earlier, Dylan thought it was Pappy. Like, can you, So like, they sold him, and like, he got a double take second look. <laughs> yeah, like... Just All we need really is just like a velvet wrap, and like, you thought it was actually, a pappy here, here's, here's what we do. If we put it back here, <laughs> can you tell? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, kind of. Yeah, but, I mean, again, I was fooled. I was walking through a, a big store, and I, I mean, saw dude, that. And look, look at, I mean, even the coloring of the label. I can't man, disagree with you. very, very <laughs> close pal color palette. But to me, the best things about this were the, the finish and the drinkability. I mean, I didn't love all the flavors. I know Dylan will talk about that, but... I mean, it, it's really smooth. I mean, I hate describing whiskeys as smooth, but there's no burn. And I'm left with this lingering grainy finish, which some people may not like that. I enjoyed it. It stuck around forever. I can still taste it. I haven't taken a sip in a couple minutes here, and it's still there. So fantastic finish. Totally drinkable. Loved it. Yeah. Um, for me, the I, I, I think you guys disagree with me on this, but I thought the aroma was great. I thought it was actually really yeah, great. I didn't get much. Um, me I, I gave it 8 out of 10 because when you open this and the, the, the aroma, um, and I kind of described it as uh, grape, uh, like wine grapes, um, like you, you squeeze the uh, skin and you, you smell that sweetness, um, summer flowers and Yucatan honey. And specifically Yucatan because they that, that honey is slightly sour. And so I like that little break in the sweetness and, you know, I, I noticed it again and again after you guys were, you know, crapping on it and saying, blah, 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 this is bad. I, <laughs> I tried to, you know, I, I, I'm an op I have an open mind, right? So I tried to look at it and once again, the, 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 the aroma is great. So I, I'm sticking with my score. Fair enough. Let's move on to the bad. All right, Jules, why don't you kick us off again? Here's what's bad. Everything that Dylan said, flavor-wise, anything, I didn't get any of that, and that's fine. He's got a more sophisticated palate. For us simple folk, it was all spicy. It was, you know, and maybe a hint of something else, but you certainly would have to tease a lot out of it to get it, I think, and that's what's seriously bad about it. Yeah, this. It, it was a lot of grain. I got so much grain and that core spiciness to it, but I, I was able to pick out flavor, so I don't think it was the worst thing about this. So you just hate 1792. That's that's what you're saying. And and you know, for the viewers, if he you hate bourbon. If you yeah, if you could see his, pink lemonade. If you could see his scorecard, you'd be shocked and appalled. And and maybe maybe, maybe that maybe footage not. will be out there somewhere, maybe. but man, it's it's terrible. So I'm prepared to be ridiculed. Yeah, for for me what's bad was actually the uniqueness. <laughs> oh no. 
<laughs> so I love it. Now you know, exists in infamy. Yeah. So for me, the uniqueness I think was the lowest score for me because I it just I, I mean like there's so many other. Uh, similar bourbons out there. Obviously, this is from Barton, so it, it kind of invokes that Barton-like flavor. There are multiple versions of 1792. I've had, I don't know, like... Oh, like barrel picks. So many barrel yeah. picks. And I, I feel like I've had amazing stuff from 1792 barrel picks in the past. And this just doesn't come out and say, oh, this is really separate from the pack it would be so awesome to see one of those barrel picks that is a 14 year old though mm. you know at, a, at that high at the full proof well mm. that's why i adjusted the score to give it the appropriate score for this but again the uniqueness it is so like you padded it <laughs> that's what he always does <laughs> all right guys let's move on to our discussion of value all right our final segment here let's talk about the value 120 bucks, you know, you'll find it 100 to 150 places. I did not rate this very high in value. That's a lot of money. And I don't think that this quite delivers at that level, personally. Yeah. Agreed. I, I think I think we give a uh, cheaper dram a little bit of leeway. But when it starts to go up to the 50, then 75, and then above 100, it opens up quite a bit. I mean, the range of liquor and the types of liquor that you can get for above $100, it's vast. Yeah. And so if you're going to, if you're going to, you know, come out with huge prices, MSRP like this, it's got to deliver. And, you know, I, I just think that it does not separate itself from the pack. Yeah. It's yeah. very, I mean, to me, it just everything about this was a little bit understated. Yeah. I mean, especially like it just, it didn't. When I take a sip of this, it did not taste like a hundred and fifty dollar bottle. Yeah, this to me, what would I pay for it? I'd say sixty to eighty. That's a pretty mm -hmm. wide spread, but yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, so I, I have to I have to think about it in multiple ways. So if I only drank bourbon, right, I would still say this is not that yeah. big of a value. <clears throat> if I drank everything else, which I do, this is definitely not a value because when you get up to this range. I can get, you know, a Highland Park for $128, you know, and that's an 18-year, right? right? And it, it starts to go into these other types of liquor with longer age, different type of flavor profiles, and I just can't justify spending it for this particular bottle. What would you pay? I'd say, I would say this fits into the $75, $80 range. Yeah, I think this is where... This is a little bit above the barrel picks for like say 1792. I mean like I get the barrel picks 1792 for 40, 40, 50 bucks, okay? And I think this is higher than that because of the age. Yeah. And I do think that the finish is better and things like that. And so I would pay a premium for addition of that kind of component. And plus you can pretend you keep it way back in the back of the shelf and pretend. Yeah, and then have back. everybody take off their glasses. Yeah. So I I literally have to put on my glasses to make sure. So I kind of struggle with this one only because, um, yeah, I mean, I give it a low value, uh, low score on value, so a two out of five as well. But um, mostly here, so what I'd pay for the juice inside, maybe fifty, <laughs> and I'd pay twenty bucks more for the bottle, and that's pretty much it. That's not a bad way of putting it. Honestly, <laughs> you know, I mean, like if I, I didn't would know, simplify it to that. If you but, tried this blind and you yeah. didn't know it was a fourteen year old, yep. Would you, be able to tell? Would that, you be able to put it in I this price range? That's why I went as low as 60 I mean, yeah. like, depending on the day, I yep. might think it's a $60 or an $80. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, very interesting discussion. All right, guys, let's get to the scores. So we do have a 10-category grading system. We... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Every time's uh, the first time for Joel. I know. Equals Six percent of the time. Points. It works every time. Every time. <laughs> uh, we go through aroma, flavor, body, complexity, balance, finish, uniqueness, drinkability, aesthetics, and value. But we do weigh flavor higher and aesthetics and value less. That's right. All right, guys. Let's get our scores. Dylan. So I would pay $75 for this. I gave it 75. 75. Yeah. All right. Jules. $61. Oh. <laughs> Harsh indeed. Market and, uh, correction, folks. I gave it a 66. Didn't wow me. Didn't wow me. 
for oh, did we, uh, did our we get there? official Curiosity Public did Ultimate Spirits Competition score and award for Calumet 14, 67. <laughs> That is a solid bronze medal in our scoring system. Wow. Which is nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. Not at all. Um, pretty big difference here, though. I mean, we were both... Unless the, you ask Dylan, because he wants to give everything a gold. Well, he, <laughs> he wanted to give this a silver, specifically. <laughs> and I could see this scoring a silver, but it just it, it just did not deliver on the flavor for me. Comment below if you think that this is I a think silver. for the... <laughs> hey, cut that. Cut that, man. No, please. Way. Please. Okay, please. This whole thing's Please. Oh, now we know where God. Dylan's moonlighting. <laughs> Hey, that's gonna sound weird a bit. Yeah, All right, Joel sticks out. <laughs> hey, tell us what you guys think in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up if you like this episode. Subscribe for more videos from Curiosity Public. And as always, stay healthy, stay safe, stay curious. smell this again. It's really flowery. It's really pleasant. Oh, it's just so much grain, dude. The grain just what overwhelms grain? everything. It's like a yeasty, oh grainy smell. That's Did all you I like get. rub your face with And like, sorry, I'm not sophisticated now. I don't know what Yucatan honey tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> Who goes up the f***ing Yucatan? <laughs> Wait, aren't you the one who gave me the New, yeah. New York <laughs> the New rooftop York. <laughs> New York rooftop honey? That's right. Oh, geez.